Uh, my name is David, and uh, today what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about uh, why you should be thinking about dashboards. Um, and uh, really the flow is going to be first about uh, visualization, um, and then we're going to be talking about dashboards, and then finally why that uh, is relevant. So really, uh, when we're thinking about uh, the heart of dashboards, um, it really is data. You know, uh, today we are uh, really swimming in data, uh, whether it's business data, or whether it's demographic data, or just um, you know data that to do with our own personal lives, and the way that this is going to be displayed to us uh, could be perhaps in tables, or it could be actually something that is uh, visualized. And what the people analytics manager at Google would say is um, the way that you would view data in a table is you're actually reading it, uh, you're you're kind of parsing it like uh, like you would with words, whereas with something more visual like say graphs you're actually uh, consuming it uh, with you know, sort of the more visual aspect of your perception. And uh, because of this, it's a sort of a higher uh, sort of bandwidth of information that we are taking in. Uh, some would say that that's, it is actually more uh, natural for us to, uh, to take in data in this sense. And if we think about how this is actually uh, permeating through uh, all of our lives, especially in the recent years, uh, we can actually think about uh, last year uh, with the Summer Olympics and how the New York Times actually had a fairly good coverage of uh, you know how the uh, the Olympics in terms of its data is actually quite interesting. Um, I'm sure that many of you have actually seen this uh, this interactive video. Uh, it actually talks about how uh, Usain Bolt actually compares to all of the other uh, 100 meter sprint uh, men uh, in uh, former former Olympics. And uh, it actually is quite informative. And really the uh, idea here is that uh, we're now being presented with data in a way that is much more uh, intuitive to us than simply a table. Uh, whether it's something you know, in uh, sort of a 3D rendering like what you saw there, or if it's through uh, a sort of chart like what you are seeing here. What's important is that this is something that is uh, intuitive uh, for us to understand. Uh, this is something that would be more effective uh, than simply showing just a, a table by itself. And uh, again, this is relevant for any kind of uh, data, um, and uh, the New York Times is especially um, well known for doing visualization quite well. So what the topic is, taxes, and how that's relevant to, say, the average American, um, you know, that is something that they are deliberately focusing their efforts on uh, in terms of their graphics team. And in fact, the, uh, the graphics editor at the New York Times would say that uh, there is uh, a good return on investment when it comes to uh, uh, changing how it is that you're showing data to you, your end users. By making it something that is a much more visual uh, experience, uh, it is something that people would process in a, a better way than uh, if it was simply just a table. And this is actually a uh, significant, significant trend, um, uh, again, not just through news outlets, but in uh, many different uh, facets uh, as a whole, uh, whether it is through uh, public awareness campaigns or through any kind of marketing campaigns, whatever the um, you know, actual medium is, uh, the fact is that, is that infographics are becoming much more uh, prevalent, especially in the, uh, the last few years. So if we uh, see here, we are, are actually looking at the, uh, the trend of uh, Google searches for the uh, the term infographic, and we can uh, see that it is uh, trending significantly upwards. Uh, noting that you know there are people who are becoming more and more aware of this idea of an infographic. So really, what what is that again? Um, it is simply uh, you know how we are visualizing data, uh, whether it, whether it is a, uh, a you know for a news article like this one from again the New York Times, or if it is something that is um, again. Uh, specific to a particular uh, marketing campaign or uh, wherever there is, is anything to do with data, you know, showing it as uh, something visual is becoming uh, a much more significant um, factor of our lives. And uh, in fact, this is uh, actually so much so that uh, there actually is a uh, sort of journalism competition uh, when it comes to infographics. Uh, this is uh, the results for uh, the one that was actually run a few weeks ago in Spain. And you can see how the New York Times actually took home uh, seven of the 21 gold medals. And uh, so this is obviously, again, something that is very important to them from a journalistic standpoint, uh, because their goal is to help the uh, readers understand their story much better. So um, again, 
uh, along the lines of making uh, data more easily consumed by individuals. I'm sure many of you have seen this uh, gentleman here, Hans Rosling. Uh, he is the founder of a website called Gapminder, and uh, his, uh, his tool there, as uh, being rendered on this screen, is uh, one that does help uh, many people understand demographic data, uh, data to do with uh, lifespan, and you can see here income, and a number of other uh, different metrics. And the, the idea here, of course, is that uh, this is data that would uh, historically have been um, very uh, narrow in terms of the audience who would actually be looking at uh, this data and being interested in it. And what we're seeing today is uh, that now that is becoming much more democratized. Uh, this is something that uh, you and I can very easily uh, you know, view or watch uh, or examine and we can uh, understand the story behind this data. And uh, you know, when it comes to how it is that we are visualizing uh, data, it is important, of course, to understand uh, that the, you know, the purpose of data visualization is to you know, create insight as opposed to creating uh, pretty pictures, which is really why uh, the New York Times has uh, focused that much energy on those uh, infographics and other forms of uh, data visualization is that um, it's one thing to simply make a picture out of data. It's certainly something else to make it uh, you know, well designed uh, for, for it to be insightful. So. Um, before we uh, talk more about dashboards, I'd like to uh, sort of have a uh, common terminology here talking about uh, you know, what, what really is a dashboard. And in a very, very general sense, uh, we can say that it is a decision support tool uh, that uh, really shows metric summaries to the user. So what do we mean by decision support? Well, um, ideally with a dashboard, um, when we're talking about decision support, that is uh, where the data would actually tell its own story. Um, rather than it sort of being something that uh, would be uh, used for a um, you know uh, for persuasive uh, uh, purposes, and when we're, we're, talk, when we're talking about metrics, uh, that would be something that would actually be um, you know uh, updated on a regular basis, uh, not necessarily demographics, for example. Um, it could be something that is uh, say you know personal financial uh, metrics like so. And uh, really, this is uh, more of a, a general uh, definition, I would say, for a dashboard. Uh, when we're talking about sort of a more ideal uh, definition of a dashboard, uh, you know, we would want to incorporate, uh, you know, uh, visual techniques into there, uh, whether it's the use of, uh, you know, colors to um, attract the eye or uh, to choose a uh, data visualization uh, that is appropriate for that particular type of data. Uh, and we're talking about also key metrics. Uh, we're talking about you know the ones that are actually related to let's say performance rather than uh, results perhaps uh, depending on of course the purpose of the dashboard uh, you know you want uh, maybe metrics that are actually going to help you make a difference in your day uh, something that you can actually act upon um, and of course the other keyword there is um, uh, you know to be able to understand those key metrics uh, you do want to uh, make sure that the user understands exactly what is going on and that something that is labeled as a uh, negative uh, truly is that. And of course, uh, you want to do this in a rapid manner. Um, the, the idea, of course, with a dashboard is that uh, you want them to be able to understand what is going on in a short period of time. Otherwise, you can simply provide them with well, a table. Um, and that is uh, something that could take them a while to understand. Uh, so a dashboard, ideally, is uh, something that would use visual methods uh, to help the user understand key metrics in a rapid manner. And this is something that, that we discuss in uh, further detail in uh, one of our previous uh, webinars. Uh, you can find that on, on our uh, YouTube channel uh, where we talk about uh, the efficiency that relates to the uh, rapidness that the user can understand their metrics, uh, the function, the fact that they are actually key metrics uh, that relate to what it is that the user is interested in. And then there's the emotion side. Uh, that really has more to do with the uh, design and uh, really knowing your audience and what is appropriate for them. And so when we're talking about uh, you know, well-designed dashboards, this is something along the lines of uh, what we have in mind. Um, and uh, really for, uh, for today, I'll talk about it in a much more general sense, but this is uh, sort of the more idealized um, version of a dashboard that I would have in mind. So talking about uh, how data is available to us uh, in, uh, in our sort of daily lives, if we uh, have a look at this table here, this is actually transit data for the local transit here in Toronto. And you can see how it's not really something that you know, a, a person would really want to 
understand, but if we express it in a way that is actually relevant to the individual, uh, like for example, you know, when the next bus is coming, um, and uh, you know, when the bus after that is coming, for example, uh, that becomes all of a sudden much more relevant and much more easier to understand. And now, uh, again, this is this has to do with very recent, uh, you know, uh, developments in terms of uh, data availability and uh, the ability, of course, for us to uh, make uh, certain visualizations or you know, simply access to data uh, available to uh, to our users. So when we're dealing with, say, something like this with uh, business data, like so, you know, it uh, it could be that perhaps uh, you currently have a report or an Excel extract. Uh, that would be uh, bringing out data like so. And uh, although it is uh, highly precise and it does give you a uh, large amount of detail, uh, what it uh, doesn't do a very good job at is let you understand the, uh, the big picture in a very uh, uh, you know, rapid and easy way. And so to take this data and to actually show it in a much more uh, visual way is something that can very much help the, uh, the end user understand what's going on. So here, rather than uh, showing the uh, individual rows of the tail, uh, what we're doing is we're showing the, uh, the, the trend, the general trend of the, uh, the two metrics there, uh, and uh, we're using that in a spark line. And what the user can do, perhaps, uh, if this is on an interactive dashboard, is they can simply mouse over one of the items there to get that additional detail if it is necessary. And I think this is another aspect of uh, well-designed dashboards that uh, sometimes uh, you know, isn't necessarily uh, employed uh, in the best way is that um, I want to keep in mind that uh, really for certain dashboards the ideal way that you want to design it is to have a high-level summary that shows them whether or not something needs attention and then if needed they can actually interact with that dashboard to get that data that they actually need. Now of course the interaction which uh, needs to be something you know, intuitive and uh, you know pretty straightforward for them to understand um, but that's really the, the key here is that uh, you know you want to start at that, that high level and if need be they can get back to that table view that tabular view of their data but of course through the act of drilling down and drilling through and changing filters they would have narrowed down the scope of what is actually being shown on that table so instead of the um, you know uh, the two dozen rows of data that we're seeing there uh, maybe instead we're seeing just maybe five so that's really uh, one of the, the, the value uh, propositions that you can have with your dashboards is um, not only is it a great way to just you know, visualize your data, but also it's uh, a way for you to uh, be able to narrow the scope of uh, any uh, type of the reports that you generate so that they would themselves also be easier to understand. Now what's important to realize here is that um, as uh, the research Vice President of Gartner would uh, would say that there actually are certain areas of uh, of some companies that you know don't actually you know have uh, very much uh, invested into business intelligence or analytics, and um, really the, the, this it really does speak true uh, with uh, many of the clients who I speak to, uh, where they are uh, stuck in uh, this kind of scenario, where they have this uh, business database. And what they're doing is, uh, uh, whether maybe it's the analysts or if uh, maybe it's a power user, they are taking extracts of that data into Excel. Right? So they, ha they are getting maybe uh, an, a reporting services report, uh, and they are you know, copying that data into Excel, and they're creating their own charts within Excel, because that is a tool that they are familiar with. And then what happens is uh, they'll take that Excel file, and uh, they likely would have a portal, uh, whether it's SharePoint or maybe some other portal, uh, they would then deposit that into that portal because it is uh, designed to be a uh, document repository. So what happens now? What happens is that perhaps somebody else, another analyst, or maybe uh, the next day uh, somebody would take uh, some of this data and uh, maybe they need data from a separate database. Maybe they have one from operations and they have another one from um, accounting or finance. So now we have a, a spreadsheet that combines uh, data from two different sources and maybe they perform some calculations on that. They take that and they now put that onto the SharePoint portal. Similarly, similarly again, perhaps somebody only takes the data from operations and puts that into the SharePoint portal. And so now what's happening is that you're getting uh, many different copies of similar data, related data, data that comes from perhaps the same databases, but at different points in time. And uh, now it's not particularly clear uh, you know where the actual source of truth is. In fact, uh, maybe some of those documents don't even end up on SharePoint. Maybe some of those documents actually end up just on somebody's desk, and now they are making their decisions based off of that 
uh, extract of data rather than um, you know the other uh, sources of, um, of of data on their portal. So this is uh, something that uh, that happens uh, quite frequently. You know, people sometimes call it Excel hell, and um, you know the the issue here, of course, is that uh, this is a, a somewhat antiquated way of managing data. Uh, this is um, you know using technology that has been around for for some time, and uh, the the industry, as I'll show you, has very much moved beyond that. So. Ideally, of course, what we want is to uh, have data that uh, is fed into a, a single point of truth, uh, something that would take data from today, um, and it would uh, perhaps maybe, maybe have some additional uh, data added as needed. But the idea, of course, is that you have this single point uh, at which you would, uh, you would have all of these um, uh, data points that are always updated, and everybody is looking at the same data, and so this way everybody is making their decisions based off of the same information. Um, and this is the kind of consistency that um, people are uh, really struggling with, and this is oftentimes uh, why people would be contacting us, is because they are kind of stuck in that, uh, that position and they need uh, some help to get to uh, this goal here. So if you look at uh, the actual uh, Google Trends, again, going back there, uh, what, we, what we see if we actually uh, search, search for the term management dashboard is, um, you know, it, uh, this is this probably, you know, it rings true with uh, the terms that are, um, you know, kind of sort of at the high point of, of, uh, of rising here. And so um, you see how Excel and SharePoint, and you see that people's uh, frustration actually do uh, show here. And in fact, maybe some people don't even know uh, what a dashboard is. And so this is why it's important for uh, individuals like uh, like yourself uh, to actually speak with uh, with your stakeholders about uh, dashboards and why this is going to be important for your organization or for your uh, business. So um, what we're seeing here uh, is uh, really the fact that um, in the recent years we have uh, focused very much on the accumulation of data. There has been a, uh, a certainly a growth in data sources, and uh, what what's happening now is we don't know really how to make that data accessible to humans. <laughs> we need to make that uh, you know readable in a way or consumable in a way uh, that, that it actually you know helps us understand what is going on, and we really do see that reflected in uh, the trends here when the, uh, Gartner does uh, survey the uh, CIOs. Uh, this is something that happens on an annual basis. They ask them what their top uh, uh, top uh, technology priorities are, and in uh, 2010 and 2011, we saw that you know business intelligence is at number five. But uh, in uh, the years 2012 and 2013, uh, we do see that it does rise to the top. And so this is certainly something that is uh, sitting on the forefronts of the uh, the minds of uh, uh, CIOs. And um, again, if we look at the other rankings. Of uh, the items on this uh, on this uh, survey, we do see that uh, virtualization is something that has uh, has fallen. And uh, what this actually refers to uh, is the uh, the server and uh, data storage infrastructure uh, that uh, would have been put in place to support this growth in data. And so we can see how this has really fallen in, in the priorities for CIOs. And in fact, for this year, it is uh, number eight on the uh, priority level. So you can see how uh, this really does, again, reflect upon the uh, importance of looking at business intelligence and uh, you know, dashboards as a whole um, when uh, looking at your organization. And again, looking at uh, Google Trends, you can see how this actually uh, does reflect in the uh, you know, re relatively stable um, uh, searches for management dashboards as opposed to here with virtualization, uh, we're looking at uh, sort of a steady decline in the interest there. So when we're looking at uh, general business intelligence uh, spend, again, these are figures uh, uh, obtained from, uh, from Gartner. And uh, the idea, of course, is that you know, this is something that is quite serious for, uh, for businesses. This is something that they are looking into uh, very heavily. And uh, it is something that you should definitely keep in mind uh, with your organization, uh, because it is definitely the way that the, the market is moving. And in fact, if uh, we do look at uh, various different industries, we do find that the need to visualize data, uh, whether this is uh, uh, a quote coming from the financial sector, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's talking about how you know, with the, uh, the current uh, approaches to how data is being presented to uh, the users, it's not necessarily sufficient. 
Uh, moving on, we're looking at the, uh, the airline industry, talking about how uh, they are internally using dashboards to, uh, to manage uh, their customer relations. And this is uh, becoming uh, very important for uh, a number of different industries uh, where they are, again, collecting all this information. I'm sure that many of you have seen, uh, you know, maybe perhaps on your receipts, uh, the option to fill in a customer survey. And uh, this is actually data that is uh, constantly being accumulated by a variety of different uh, organizations. And now they need to really do something with it. Uh, they need uh, some way to uh, uh, make this consumable for their management or for their analysts. And uh, in fact, this isn't uh, even limited to uh, internal use. Uh, here we have uh, a, a bank in, I in Ireland, and uh, what they are talking about is actually staying ahead of the competition uh, by providing their customers with a, with a dashboard application uh, for them to really manage their finances. Um, and so you can see really how this can uh, permeate through many different uh, aspects of your business, not just internally looking at management metrics, although that is important. It also is relevant to uh, how you would uh, face your customers uh, if, your, if your organization does that as well. And um, here we actually see, this is something that has been in the States for some time, uh, Domino's Pizza, if you order your pizza online, this is something that would give you the status of your, um, of your pizza as it's being prepared and baked and then out for delivery. Um, and uh, if you were to go into the store, uh, the actual uh, you know, location, the physical location, uh, you would see actually well, something that would give you this kind of um, you know, uh, insight into data that is relevant to um, you know, your actual uh, your actual uh, interaction with the uh, with the organization, and so you can see how this is actually not just even limited to North America. Uh, we we have uh, images here from Iraq and from the Ukraine, and so this is uh, certainly not something that's uh, specific to an industry, nor is it specific to a particular geography of the world. This is something that is uh, happening uh, across the globe, and uh, you should be aware of this. So going back to um, uh, the reference about New York Times, I mean the um, what the uh, the uh, the trend with journalism definitely is is uh, there is much uh, more emphasis on the collection of data because it is becoming much more available, and uh, subsequently there is this term called data journalism that has emerged, and um, uh, in fact here we see how the editor of the Guardian is saying that it is changing the industry as a whole, uh, just like how data in your industry is likely to change uh, how you and your um, uh, other, other organizations in your industry are going to perform and how you're going to interact with your clients or your internal management or your you know, actual um, end users. So again, looking at the trends, we can see how journalism has spiked over the, uh, the last few years. And really, this is, again, relevant across uh, many different industries. Um, here we have uh, a way for um, you as a member of the public to access, let's say, the uh, you know, environmental data. Um, again, it's much more friendly than simply downloading uh, a CSV, for example, a comma-separated uh, value file, a, a table, basically, of data. We, you need something that's more intuitive for you to access. Uh, when you're uh, looking at you know, how you would um, perhaps choose a school for your child. This is, again, just a part of normal life, and uh, this is something that is becoming increasingly re uh, relevant to the, uh, the public as a whole. People are now expecting this data to be available. People are now expecting this data to be displayed in a way that is uh, intuitive to them. Um, this is not just a nice to have in certain uh, aspects. This is a need to have. So when you're looking at whether it's the uh, supply chain industry, or if it's uh, the even, you know, yeah, here this is the uh, secret shopper industry. I mean, you know, the, it's definitely something that is uh, very important uh, for, you know, for you to expose to your clients. And uh, here you can actually see how in, in the Cleveland Clinic, um, yeah, although in 1998 they had a loss of $100 million, uh, through the use of dashboards they were actually able to, to turn that around and they are actually quite uh, successful as a result. So really, the question, why choose dashboards? Well, number one, of course, uh, it is because your stakeholders will expect them. Again, because this is becoming something uh, much more uh, prominent through uh, any kind of medium, uh, throughout any, any part of your lives. Um, the, uh, uh, what's happening um, is that, well, your alternatives or your competitors 
are actually using this. Uh, they are creating their own dashboards. They are, uh, you know, seeking out perhaps advice on uh, the best design. They are looking at ways to make this actually um, insightful for their partners, for their customers, and uh, of course, what this means if um, uh, if you don't use dashboards is that you are likely to be falling behind. So. Why choose dashboards? Well, the reason is to really, at the end of the day, survive. So thank you very much for uh, your attention today. Um, I believe we'll be uh, fielding questions at this point.